Hello and welcome to the Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video. Today we'll be continuing the trend of looking at heavy weapons and today we will be looking at the humble yet yeah, I consider very very good mortar. Um, the mortar is an interesting weapon and I will follow the same, same format, we'll go through what this, what is the mortar, what's its stats, um, what's its cost, what's its advantages, what's its disadvantages, um, and then how, how they should be used in your army. Um, but yeah, the, the mortar, just, I'm going to say straight off the bat, I really, really like the mortar. I think it's a really, really good little weapon, and hopefully I will convert a few of you guys to thinking the same thing, because you don't see them often in Imperial Guard armies. Um, and there's a reason for that, but we'll get into that later. So, the mortar, what is it? Well, it's a 48 inch range. Minimum, it's a it's a 48 inch range, strength 4, AP 6, small blast, heavy 1, weapon, barrage. And it costs 5 points. So, it's cheap as chips. It is essentially a tube that you obviously stick a fucking mortar around into. It's not complicated and it's powerful for five points. Really, really powerful. Uh because I mean let's just look at that. I mean it's you've got a forty eight inch range, so you can hit pretty much anywhere on the battlefield. You've got strength four, so you can threaten any infantry any infantry model and you know you know from well, anything for fire warriors, Skitari, guardsmen, you know, those are obviously its sort of preferred sort of toughness, but, you know, things like Tyranids and Orcs, it, you know, it's great. It's the perfect anti tyranid weapon because it wounds on threes, they don't get an armor save there. Little horde guys don't. It's good against Orcs as well. Because of that strength four, it can threaten Marines. Uh, you know, obviously, wounds Marines on fours. Um, yeah, it's just a general for five points. It's a really good little workhorse obviously it's let down a little bit by its AP 6 but let's be honest what are we really expecting from a 5 point weapon um, and so it's got a good range it's got a decent strength for an anti-infantry weapon um, and it's got barrage which means you can sit out of line of sight you can lob mortar shells all day every day um, every turn you'll be lobbing out mortar rounds and you know it's like that what you know it's just it's just good uh, and another thing about the barrage weapon is that it's if you go and look at the barrage rule when it comes to allocating wounds the wounds must be allocated from the center of the template outwards which means you can if you are lucky use this to snipe important characters and special weapons out of a squad because if you put for example, if you put this mortar template, let's say you've got a enemy melter gun, and it's threatening one of your tanks. If you put this, if you put the mortar barrage on top of the melter gunner's head and roll a hit, all the wounds that you suffer will have to go on that melter gunner first. That could save your tank. It's situational, and to be honest, that's trying to apply a little bit of finesse to what is not a not a complicated <laughs> weapon. That's 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 you know advanced tactics there. But for five points, that's what I keep going back to, that five point price tag, because a lot of people will poo-poo the mortar, but you have you do have to use it properly, but fundamentally what it comes down to is you're paying five points for a blast, strength four blast weapon. You can't really go wrong with that. It's you know, you're paying essentially five points for a missile launcher frag blast. But you know, you just it's just so cheap that it only has to kill any model in the game apart from a conscript or a grot you know you kill any model in the game and it makes it it's made its points back you kill a couple of grots you made your points back you kill an orc boy you made your points back you kill a guardsman you made your points back a gant or a gaunt you make your points back pretty much you kill one space marine with a mortar you just made three times your points back that's where its true strength lies so you know it's what so what how does how would we what what does the mortar pair well with though well obviously it pairs well with the grenade launcher again for similar reasons to the uh 
to the uh, missile launcher. It's a if you put a, if you put a mortar in your infantry squad and a grenade launcher, you've got a unit that's putting out two small blasts a turn. That's pretty good, and at 48 inch range to boot. Having said that, I I might try it for a change, but I rarely put mortars in my mainline infantry squads. Um, purely because by the very nature of the weapon um, you're going to be sitting out of line of sight and you're going to be uh, therefore wasting a lot of the rest of your firepower because if you if you take a single mortar and you put it in a 50 man 50 point infantry squad and then the rest of that infantry squad doesn't do anything for the rest of the turn you've really paid 55 points for that mortar that's what you've got to remember so it's you know unless of course that was what you were going to do all along stick it out you know in which case if you've got an objective you stick one of these behind it you know you know an objective out of line of sight in some cover you stick a mortar squad in there that's not too bad i mean you can't really we spoke about in the last kind of um missile launcher game how those five points add up and that's kind of true with mortars as well i mean it might really seem like oh just spend five points go straight up to an auto kind of much better deal uh yeah you would be right in many ways but the mortar is cheaper and those five points add up and the mortar fulfills a completely different role to the um auto cannon i don't think you'll find many imperial guard players that have got a bad word to say about the mortar you know we all know it's not the fantastic game changing death star killing op bullshit weapon but it's a tried and tested like the heavy bolter it's tried and tested it's been in our army for generations now codex after codex it's it's a real little workhorse every guard player owns at least one mortar it's a good little weapon so it compares with um, so a bit of a tangent but you compare it co combos well with the with the grenade launcher uh similar similarly it's kind of combos well with the flamer but purely because it's an anti-infantry weapon but again the only t the only real reason, the only time the flamer and the mortar would ever really combo well is if you're launching your mortar rounds from behind cover and then someone deep strikes something down to try and take your objective off you and then you can bring the flamer to bear. That's kind of when it works. Um, obviously, snipe. If you want to go for the cheapest, if you want to go for the cheapest possible infantry squad and it'll still contribute to. <laughs> Pardon me. Still contribute to your game. Go for the mortar sniper combo. That is the cheapest possible, fully up well, re fairly upgraded squad you can go for. You know, if you fulfill, if you want to fill both your special and your heavy weapon slots for seven points, you can get yourself a small blast and a sniper rifle. And they only have to kill one. They only have to kill one or two models between them, and they get all their points back. There's something to be said for that. There's some there's, there's an idea which I've just got in my head. I should try that combo out. I very well, tr very may well try out a <coughs> platoon of mortar snipers. I don't think it'll be particularly powerful, but you've got to try these combos out. You know, it could be game changing. I doubt it, but it could be a hidden combo there. So we've covered obviously the mortar. Just, that goes without saying doesn't go well with the melter gun or the plasma gun just goes without saying that they, they they're both high just it just makes the complete defeats the point of taking a cheap weapon if you then go and splurge 15 points on a plasma gun mortar plasma just that's not a combo so saying that where would i where would i deploy my mortars where would i where would i physically use them um and like i said i don't really use my mainline infantry squads simply because they by their nature you'll be hiding out of line of sight um you'll want you know you'll the whole point of the mortar that you've got to take advantage of its barrage you know so um, you're unlikely to put it in your infantry squads because your infantry squads are going to be because it can't move and shoot at all because you can't snap fire the blast it really relegates your squad to being static so unless you're using it in a you know sort of cheap 
double blast capacity mortar grenade launcher. I can't really, and I've never done that myself, I can't really see myself using mortars in my mainline infantry squads. It just doesn't really fit. Um, now in the past, before we, had, we got our new codex, the, I used to never ever leave home. Back in the days of respawning conscripts and outflanking whole platoons, the golden era of foot guard, back in the day I never left home without two mortar pits, which what by that is what I mean is, I mean is two heavy weapon squads with a mortar in each. Three mortars in each, I should say. Never left home without them. And I kind of miss take, not taking them anymore. Um, I don't know why I stopped taking them, to be honest. I really, really like them, and they were really cinematic, and they never really let me down either. But the problem is, is that when you take mortar heavy weapon teams, there's, there's two problems with it in the new codex. Well, one, there's a problem which I've always had, is they get expensive. Suddenly you've taken a five-point weapon, and it's now because of the stupid way heavy weapons teams are priced, where you pay 50% more than you should do, you're paying 60 points for three small blasts. It doesn't really seem worth it. So they're not that cheap when you take them in a heavy weapons team. They're good though. They're good. All all guard heavy weapons to a certain extent really benefit from being in a heavy weapons team, or obviously a heavy weapons squad. Um, but it's just slightly too expensive. Now they used to be able to get away with it because you could they had the the boast of well it's sixty points, but it's still the cheapest form of artillery in the guard army. Because you know, griffins were seventy five points. And griffins were okay, but mortars could compete with them for being cheaper and putting out more blasts. That's gone now. Because you all know what I'm gonna say now. The Wyvern. The Wyvern the the fucking Wyvern suppression tank. I uh, I mean everyone raves about them. I mean I don't own any I have some sawn off basilisk which I can use as counts as wyverns, and I have a griffin which I occasionally use as a counts wyvern. And the wyverns are good. Don't get me wrong, but the problem with wyverns, and this is going to sound so strange, but in the context of mortars, wyverns are too powerful. Because a wyvern is 65 points, and for 5 points more than triple mortar heavy weapon team, you get 4 blasts. You get twin linked, you get shred, you get ignores cover. And arguably, you get all that, plus don't forget a whole heavy weapon, so you can get a heavy bolter as well. So really, it's like you're getting four heavy weapons teams, five heavy weapons teams, because you get four blasts instead of three, and the heavy bolter. Five heavy weapons teams for five points more on arguably a more durable platform. Because the big problem with, with heavy weapons teams, heavy weapons squads, is they're squishy. You you look at them funny, they they die and they run off because they're in leadership 7. So that's why you don't see the mortar pits anymore. You don't see the triple mortar squads. They're really good and they're really fluffy. And they used to be a big staple of my list. But like with so many things that got fucked by this 6th edition codex. I don't take them anymore because I just feel like I'm being stupid taking them instead of taking wyverns but i still like them so after all so you might be thinking to yourself well where the fuck do i take mortars then in my platoon where do i take them i mean you're saying you don't really see them in a place in the infantry squads and you say you don't really see a place in the heavy weapon squads where the fuck do you take them platoon command squads if you go take a mortar best place the best place to put it is in a platoon command squad now because what Imagine you're in a scenario where you've taken your platoon of Imperial Guard and you've taken it, or maybe you've taken many platoons of Imperial Guard if you're a good boy, but you've taken your platoon of Imperial Guard and you've taken them in your arm for the sole purpose of holding your backfield objective. Let's say it might be Emperor's Will, or even in Maelstrom, you need some units that hold back, provide fire support, and Guard infantry squads are quite good at doing that. If obviously tooled up with heavy weapons and other and you know other spec and other long range firepower guard squads are really good for holding the line you know you can make them fearless whatever blah 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 now imagine you've done that so you know you're not going to be uh running and gunning with your 
uh, Platoon Command Squad. You know your Platoon Command Squad is going to be staying static and issuing orders to help hold the line, help put out the firepower. Now your enemy is going to see your, if you don't, if you just have your Platoon Commander who, you know, out of line of sight, he's not going to be contributing anything to the fight. If you have him in line of sight, so he can use his four las guns and maybe you give him a bolter, your enemy is going to see that pretty quickly and wipe him off the face of the board. Here comes the mortar. You pay for your little five point upgrade and you sit that platoon command squad out of line of sight and you lob shells every turn. Six, five to, five to seven turns, five to seven small blasts, five point upgrade, guarantee you're going to get your points back. Guaranteed, your opponent at the end of the game will say, fucking hell, those little mortars, they're really thorn in my side. Because he's just going to notice the little niggles because every turn it hits them. And that's a general thing going on with artillery, but every turn it just hits your opponent and really pisses them off. It's a really good little trick. So, overall, that's it. That's, I don't want to drone about the mortar too much. It's a good little gun. Good little heavy weapon. It's cheap as chips. And it has a place in every Imperial Guard list. Let me just tell you now, if you run your if you are a guard player listening to this and you take your platoon command squads and every game you have them with your platoon, maybe behind an aegis, defending, 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 and you don't know what upgrades to give them, you don't want to spend a lot of points to them obviously, buy yourself buy yourself a mortar. You might be rocking four flamers. Get rid of those four flamers. You're never going to use them. Buy yourself a mortar. Don't forget, you can launch a mortar at the top of a Chimera. If you like putting your platoon command squads in Chimeras, then why not buy them a mortar? For very cheap, you could for very cheap, you could buy yourself a mortar and two flamers. If I mean, I don't recommend this. My personal recommendation for platoon command squad is either bare bones or a five point mortar. But if you're the kind of player that likes Chimeras. This is obviously going off on a bit of a wild theory here. You're never going to get to use more than two of them at the top hatch of your Chimera anyway. And you never might you, you might never use those two flamers popping out the top hatch of your Chimera. But you will use that mortar just lobbing around up every turn. Basically your Chimera becomes a little sort of modern day mortar carrier. But anyway, that's obviously a bit of a far flung idea, but trust me, if you're a guard player and you don't really know what to do with your if you platoon command squads, you're not sure how to use them, they keep dying buy them a 5 point mortar, stick them behind some line of sight blocking cover, get them to issue orders every turn, lob a mortar shell every turn, I guarantee it will it will give you results. I guarantee every I guarantee every game you'll be like, oop, get to fire my mortar now. You take three platoons, three platoon command squads, three mortars, you got yourself a little artillery section there. I guarantee every game they'll be useful for your opponent. He'll have some cultists sitting on his backfield objective, some grots sitting on his backfield objective. He's got to fight through your ways of guardsmen and tanks. You can just lob some water around him. He can't do that back to you. My last thing I'm going to say, my last sign off is I have won more games than I can remember thanks to Mortar Platoon Command Squads. Can't recommend them enough. I currently am in a trend last six months, last year, of running them bare bones because I like them to be fast and mobile in my foot guard list. But in a heartbeat, I go back to the mortar in a heartbeat. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. I hope it's opened your eyes to a different kind of heavy weapon which you probably wouldn't have considered beforehand. And I hope you guys let me know how your uh, mortaring goes or in the comments post uh, your own success with mortars. But yeah, thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.